How's it going everybody? Gunner here and today we're going to tie the Chosen One Silicone Edition. So before I walk you guys through how to tie the silicone version of the Chosen One and, and I want to talk about the action and, and kind of why it's a, a really cool feature and a cool head design to do, I want to first address uh, that you should highly check out this resource. This is Bob Popovic's uh, book Pop Flies. It's his first book um, and in it he showcases multiple patterns and multiple techniques and applications for silicone. And silicone is, is a Bob Popovic's technique. Um, and it's, this is an absolutely fantastic resource. Uh, one of the best books out there. And if you pair it with Fly Design, his later book, you're literally set to chase every fish that eats other fish for the rest of your life. So go check those out. Um, additionally, you're going to need silicone. This is GE2, Household Silicone in Clear. And I'm going to show you guys how to tie it without this. You don't need this, but this is extremely helpful. And this is Kodak Professional Photo Flow Solutions. So, in the description, I have a link silicone, Kodak, both books, uh, to an Amazon page that I created and populated. And you can find all those in one spot on Amazon and, and check those out. So, why tie with silicone? So, if you look at our bare bones bulkhead chosen one, which is the foundation for this, the head is composed of like 500 little pieces of strung fuzzy fiber, and strung fuzzy fiber is wavy. It's very, very crimped, right? And that's how we build our bulk. Uh, those crimps add a lot of friction because water has to follow that crimp. It's not a straight fiber, and it's packed really, really dense. Um, so you're asking water basically to move around and through all 500 little tiny crimps of strung fuzzy fiber at variable lengths. Slows the fly down a lot. Now what silicone does is you take this and instead of having 500 pieces of strung fuzzy fiber and all of those little crimps I now have a perfectly smooth round silhouette and water can just flow over it. Now this does two things. One it makes the fly very very slippery right and that's it's a really cool thing to have a fly with a slippery head because instead of stopping, right, instead of slowing down, instead of having water friction on it so that it can't really move and go anywhere, it's free to slip and turn and glide and wobble and do whatever it wants. The other thing that's really cool is when you coat that silicone over the top, there's technically a very small little air cavity in here, and it's a trapped air pocket. Now, if you use the whole hook shank to, to build your head and you can do like two dubbing loops or, or stack wool the way Bob Popovic does you can create a fly that's fairly buoyant uh, and what's cool about that is you get some really nice interplay when you're fishing it on a sinking line and that can be extremely advantageous for different situations um, you're gonna see here I use about half the hook shank and it's because I'm not trying to create necessarily a buoyant fly but a balanced fly and so when you can trap a small degree of air behind this head you have to understand the head is where the, the hook shank is, where all the wire is, where everything's tied down, it's the heaviest place on the fly. So if you were to strip the bare bones bulkhead and give it a really long pause, eventually they'll start to dip head down and they'll start to sink. But when you create this air pocket, those flies will sit there and hover and suspend and you can work them really aggressively with a hard strip but with a really long slow pause. So they imitate wounded bait fish exceptionally well. Um, so yeah, a few cool things about silicone. And we're going to put a small degree of lead on here. It's not important. Uh, you don't have to do it. But I'm going to use the O30 and probably four or five turns because what the O30 allows me to do is I can put it anywhere in the hook shank, which means I can put it where my trapped air is. And this does, you know, it's 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 all about adding momentum. And this is something I discovered kind of on accident when I designed the Hot Fuzz. But momentum is really cool because it allows your fly to push into your leader and create slack. Not, not a lot of slack, not like you can't feel an, a strike, but I'm talking inches of slack where your fly keeps going and that gives the fly freedom to move, show its profile, turn. And uh, in my opinion, this fly when it's lightly weighted like this has an identical action to a tube jig from the gear world. Obviously I'm tying it hooked down that's just a matter of your platform. You can tie it hook up, you can tie it on a jig hook, you can tie it on the dropper jig system. But we're going to tie it hook down today. Um, so don't let that trip you up just because the two jigs are typically on hook up. But the action, the, the, the glide, the wobble, the dip, 
This it's like it's it's phenomenal. So I have material kits available on my website for this color combo hooks, the platform, the lead wire, all that you can find on my website streamersbygunner.com. Again, there's a link to the silicone and Bob Popovic's other resources. Um, and so yeah, let's jump into it. So I have an Arex TP610 Wanot and the vice here. I'm going to take out just some lead wire, but say five wraps on there. Just to help me give that a little bit more, a little bit more momentum, a little bit more mass. And I'm going to put that a little bit farther back from my head so that it's kind of where my air pocket's going to be for my silicone. Start my thread up front so I can come back to this, get your thread over it, and kind of draw it back and pin that sucker between two little thread dams here. I can just wrap over that. Now that's nice, low profile, and out of the way. I'm going to show you guys this full recipe here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk my thread back between my point and my barb. You can see my point and barb right here. Scooch that back up, and I'm going to build a thread ball right here. The purpose of this thread ball, I'm basically going to use it as a very, very small material dam to help give our squimpish hair, which is going to be our tail and our wing, a little bit of separation. It's going to increase the movement. It's also going to help the saturation and kind of light penetration match the whole fly all the way from front to back. I'm going to hit that with some super glue and while I'm at it, <coughs> super glue that so that's stuck in place. So the color combo that I want to demo for you guys is called Tannic. And so we have our brown, this is actually called Chili, our chili colored squimpish hair. We have dark brown wing and flash, brown strung fuzzy fiber, and we're going to use our peacock overwing. And that's it, just those four materials. I'm going to show you how to prep this real quick. So on this first one, I want to show you guys how to stack and treat your squimpish hair. Um, and on the second one, I want to address color combos uh, so that I, I can talk while I'm doing that. Um, so first and foremost, I'm going to come and take a, a small patch off my, my hide of squimpish hair here. You can see this is kind of woven just like it is on craft fur. Um, and I'm going to come, and there's about maybe an inch of kind of just under hair fibers that I don't need. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up and I'm going to pinch these longest fibers really hard. When you pinch the, the longest ones and you pull down, well, you get shorter fibers. And now I can stack my tips. And I can do this because as a synthetic, this is all the same diameter. Each strand is the same diameter. Now, when I put these tips back together these three times, I don't put them all flush. I don't have a, a straight edge up here, but I have a lot of different fibers going, you know, starting all the way down here, all the way up. And in doing so, I create a nice teardrop that's actually going to swim and imitate naturals. It's kind of as close as you can get, get just with the hydraulics of the, the material. I'm going to come and take out a, a decent degree of wing and flash. Cut it in half. So that's about the length of the, the squimpish that I had here. <clears throat> and what you can see is I have all my wing and flash on top, all my squimpish on the bottom. And I'll just kind of like pinch pull and then rotate and drape. And so I just basically wrap the wing and flash all the way around my bundle. And it's not perfect, but it's close. <laughs> and then I don't need this to be the, the biggest fly here. We'll do about a four inch fly right there. So I'll just kind of measure that off. The way I like to tie this in, so I'm going to tie it in backwards here. Catch that with two or three loose wraps. I'm going to try to use my left thumb here so that I don't block the camera. But you shove your, your thumbnail right on top of your, your thread wraps there. And the whole point is that that pressure from your nail going to push all the material that, that was on top around your hook shank so that it envelops your hook shank and you just look at the butts here make sure that they're perfectly distributed and wrap those butts back and you can see those butts starting to flare from that thread dam that we had in the back and that's exactly what that thread dam was for so now I can pull all this back trying to get it as even as possible I'm going to bring my thread up and catch it and while it's just lightly caught here, I can pinch and pull it to make sure that my densities are, are even. And I like the way that's distributed. Then you wrap that back to where those butts were flared. And you can see I just now have this kind of little bit of air and life to that tail. So it's not all corded up. It's going to help, 
help it to breathe better. And it's going to match that light penetration that we're going to get up front. Now I'm going to tie my back wing in a little bit further back so that I can truly use about half the hook shank uh, or a little bit more to generate my head shape and my head profile. That way I can really sculpt it and really trim it. Now the thing to be aware of is <clears throat> the more room I use for my head, the more accurate I can cut it. If I only use this little bit, well I can only trim that little bit and then I'm in my collar and I can't really trim or shape my collar and I'm at the mercy of my collar and my, my squimpish hair. And you don't want to put silicone down all of that long material because the long material can get ripped up and it can rip your silicone. You want to use the majority of your hook shank to build your head so that the fibers are sticking out at a 90 degree angle so that I can trim them to the exact shape I want. So the silicone is only over your short fibers and then bleeds into a little bit of the, the strung fuzzy fiber collar. And that's it. So anytime you're using silicone, use more hook shank for the head than you think you need. So I just blended my, my wing and flash with my squimpish and I'm going to get this on the hook shank and hollow tie it real quick and show you guys how to do that and then I'll address these color combos real quick. So cut that nice and flush after I measured it. Get that on my hook shank and again spread it around using your thumbnail and pressure. Then you can just pinch it, pinch it, pinch it, pinch it. It's always going to run away from that pinch pressure. And you're just trying to get it even. And I put down a pretty good thread base. Draw your thread out so it's level. Hit your thread with some super glue here for some durability. And wrap that super glued thread right over those butts. And then, instead of tying it in the way we did the first stack, where my thread went back over top of the material, I'm going to bring my thread up and under, trying not to catch anything. And then I'm going to make a thread wall in front of it. And the whole point of the wall is the wall is going to stand that squimpish up, basically at a 90 degree angle. And then I can actually collapse it just a little bit more than that and create a really nice tapered bait fish without much work at all that has some good volume and lift in it flash all the way throughout and it's all just perfectly kind of separated with air which will become water which will help it all swim it's a beautiful little thing so that's actually a Bob Popovic's hollow tie technique applied to squimpish here so just Sidebar, I want to talk about color combos real quick. So I have like three rules of thumb. And the first is obviously match the hatch. If you got perch, tie it in perch, like olive and yellow with barring and some orange highlights, right? If you got natural bait fish, like a shad, tie it in gray and white with a little bit of yellow flash or something. Like It's, it's very obvious to, to match the hatch. The other is like more about visibility. And you can do it in two ways. One is like dirty water. You want fish to be able to see your fly. And the other is kind of like open water where fish are far away. So they need to be able to see the fly. And this is like a lot of your saltwater patterns are like fluorescence, right? Fluorescent chartreuse and blues and pinks and yellows, right? And think about like a, an epic smallmouth color is chartreuse and white, right? And an epic peacock bass color with chartreuse and white. And that's super stained water. And this is kind of a weird color combo, this kind of coffee tannic color. And I, I saw this, I'm, I'm pretty sure it was a post by Alex Lafkis about matching the cobble, matching the bottom. Whatever, whatever that substrate is, if it's sand, fish tan. If it's, if it's kind of greenish rock, fish green flies. If it's, in my case, a lot of dark tannic water with these kind of reddish brown stones, fish dark tannic reddish brown flies. And I tried it this year. And you can see the, I have two videos of me fishing this color combo, one without silicone and one with silicone. Uh, and it drove smallmouth absolutely freaking crazy. In fact, this is, it's probably going to be my favorite color combo uh, from now on to fish in, in the future. They just wouldn't say no to the thing. Um, it was really fun to fish in my tannic red-brown stained watershed with red-brown rocks and, and matching uh, that fly to the bottom color was absolutely phenomenally successful for me. So that's where this color combo comes from. and definitely got the idea from Alex. And it was a really, I think it was a post on the Flyman blog. Um, but it's just a really cool, those are kind of the three rules of thumb that I use for 
generating color combos. One is obviously just naturals, and the other is visibility and fluorescence, and then matching the substrate, which of course is kind of in and of itself. Matching naturals, you know, match the hatch because if any time I've seen bait fish in my watershed, they are coffee colored. They're they're very dark toned. I don't, you know, it's not like I have I see a bunch of little white fly or uh, white flies, white fish swimming around, but I see a bunch of brown, dark brown, even black, oftentimes swimming around. And so this was a, a far more accurate representation to what's actually in the watershed. So that's a just a cool sh tip to to share. So I'm going to spin my thread here for my dubbing loop so my thread's nice and strong and corded up. I'm going to use a little bit longer dubbing loop than I originally did. This is probably a full six inch loop here. Close that off and walk that way up back onto my peacock. Run that down and then I'm going to run it back up again so that's really locked in place and it's not going to slip on me. And I'm using a longer loop because I added the lead wire and I have this big ramp and it's going to heat up more thread so I actually need a longer loop to to generate the full head as compared to the original tutorial. <clears throat> now anytime you're working with synthetics and the well, I'd say just about anything but synthetics that are slippery like the squimpish and the strong fuzzy fiber some dubbing wax will make or break your <laughs> how much you enjoy doing this uh, but before we get to our strong fuzzy fiber. I'm going to take a very small pinch of squimpish here. Again I'm going to clean whoops whoopsie daisies. Clean my butts out. I'm going to stack this all very very short on top of itself. Then I'm actually going to cut my waist off and take that waist and put it back inside of there. Finger taper some of that. Cut some taper into that. And you take it again. And this is going to be my collar, my squimpish collar to help blend the head into the body because the head will tend to compress that first wing and hurt your silhouette a little bit. And this heals that, kind of mends that little problem there. Now I'm going to come in with slightly more strong fuzzy fiber than the original. This is probably going to be, you know, closer to 70 strands. Now, if you've seen that original video, the natural bait fish version of the chosen one bare bones bulkhead. I think I count like 60 strands and you might be kind of like chuckling like the difference between 60 or 70 like blah 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 you know that doesn't make a difference but when I cut it in half I had 10 more fibers now I have 20 and when I cut it in half again I have 40 extra fibers in here that it becomes significant because of the way you, you cut it in half and cut it in half again right so now I'm going to take my wing and flash put that on top of my strong fuzzy fiber and I'm just going to pinch and pull and stack those two into one another and get a, a perfectly blended head. Now this is definitely one of those extra steps, right? You don't need to blend the wing and flash into the head. I definitely think on the, the bare bones version it's a very nice addition um, and definitely some of this ends up kind of winging and, and veiling over the fly in it helps make the entire fly equally flashy, which I think is a nice touch. But since we're covering it with silicone, it is definitely optional. Got stuff all over my lap. <laughs> so I'm going to cut that, not down the middle, but a little bit offset. So I have my longer fibers, 60% of my length, going into my collar here. And then I have my shorter fibers, 40% of my length, forming my head. I'm really going to stretch this stuff out in this loop here and I'm going to try to get one turn over that base because we have a larger diameter getting two turns is kind of hard to judge getting one clean turn is a lot easier so I'm going to go for one clean turn around my base with my squimpish and then everything else is spaced out so it's just nice and even I'm going to pull this towards myself you can see that everything's flexing and spin it while pulling I think that's extremely important for helping this to spin up well and come out well is to spin it while pulling it and again I'm pulling on it still I never never not pull on it I'm gonna come and pick that out with a bodkin real quick I 
my bobbin cradle in place. Really work and preen this hair back here. Strong fuzzy fiber can be hard to work with. Really get that back and preen back that collar. And now I'm just gonna walk this around nice and slow. So I got like one and a half turns of squimpish, which is perfect because I got a little extra on top, which is gonna be a nice touch. You can see just how far back I am, right? I'm like right on top of my peacock right now. Then I'm gonna use my collar to walk this down that slope. Once I get towards the bottom here, I'm really gonna pack this head on because the thinner the hook shank becomes, the more turns I can take. Really, really work this on here. And every time I take a turn, you're always preening that way back, nice and hard. You can see that hook just flexing like crazy. Make sure your vise is locked down, or else you'll be ripping your hook out of your jaws, no problem. I'm gonna come up now that I'm at my hook eye. Wrap that over my thread twice, pull up and down at the same time for leverage. Come and tie that off. <clears throat> I'm going to pick that fly out real quick here and I'll walk you through this trim job. But just like the bare bones bulkhead, I'm going to go hook eye to hook point and make that kind of initial edge all the way around the fly here. And that's kind of just a gauge. It just cleans it up. It just gets everything kind of ready. <laughs> and then I'm going to come and kind of pull up that midsection area and really just trim that down and shape a nice kind of tubular conical head on this fly. And every time I'm always pulling up on my hair so I can get a nice clean accurate cut. Pull it back down, see where it lays, see the silhouette you got. Pull it back up, cut it again. Always supporting my, my scissor hands. Always pull it up and then come in and support it. That way I'm not out here waving my scissor hand around shaking and cut more off than I want. You can see just how much head length I have. Like I have a full third of this that's head and then I get into my collar and I can really apply silicone to this entire section uh, while making it as durable as possible and not trapping so much air that it's, it's overly buoyant but just enough air that it's perfectly balanced. Now because we're applying silicone our head's going to be really firm. Um, and it's, I shouldn't say super firm, it's not like epoxy, it's, it's actually squishy and, and kind of a, a nice texture. It's very similar to like a swim bait or an actual fish, which is kind of cool. Uh, but I do want to make sure that I have a very clear hook gap. So I'm going to come and flatten out that bottom more than I normally would on my bulkheads. So that I have a very exposed hook gap here, which is going to A, help make sure your silicone doesn't block that. And B, it's going to be easier to apply the silicone because you're not going to be down there catching your barb and whatnot. So that's nice and cleaned up, and that's about as good as that needs to be right there. So something I want to mention real quick, and it has to do with toning flies. Uh, so if you take your chart pack marker and you mark over the top of this, which I just did, uh, and then you apply your silicone, it'll, it'll kind of dye your silicone. You can see the head of this fly is nice and black, nice and black but the bottom is milky and the silicone is clear and that milky throat only appears on dark colors so your brown, your olives, your blacks, etc. Right? Now that's kind of a nice touch because it's on the throat, it's on the underbelly. And most fish have white bellies and they have white chins, if you will, chins like bottom jaws uh, and so that's actually a really natural kind of thing to have but I don't really want that on top. Now if you apply your marker and then apply your silicone that marker will get kind of like infused with that silicone and it'll bleed and continue to bleed over time like indefinitely and every time you fish it your head will get a little bit darker and a little bit darker and a little bit darker until you have a black head 
Now that's fine on this brown fly, but you might not like that on a white fly, which is why I'm warning you. If you apply your marker, what I'd recommend is tie two flies. And so I, I marked this one up, put it down, tie another one. By the time you're done, this marker will be set and mostly dry and it's not going to bleed everywhere, but you'll have that nice black top. So that's what I'd recommend. Now, <clears throat> I'm going to come in with my GE2 silicone and clear. And I'm going to use my finger that does not have marker on it. You can see this middle finger is darker. <laughs> now I want to show you guys how to tie this fly without photo flow. This is super helpful and what this is is it's a wetting agent and so I'm going to apply this and then I'm going to get my finger wet and I can smooth all out the second coat and you get that perfect clean finish. And the way you do it without photo flow is actually with saliva. It's kind of gross but it works and so get a coffee mug or something that you can spit into so that you can get your finger down in there and get your finger wet in saliva because what you don't want to do is stick your finger in your mouth touch silicone and then stick your finger back in your mouth don't do that <laughs> so get something to spit into and we're going to use saliva that way all you need to buy is a four dollar tube of silicone and you can tie this variation right so let's check this out I'm gonna come and Oh man, that's thick. Open up my tube here. <laughs> I'm going to squirt this onto my finger. And you can see I'm just going to start liberally applying this to my fly. And keep it right up at the, the hook eye to start. Try to get a better view of how much I'm putting on my finger here. But a pretty good bead on my finger. And then just work that into the fly. Pretty good bead on my finger work that into the fly and really just like mash it into the head like just mash it in there because I want to seal the head of that fly now I'm gonna wipe it off by drawing it back and that's gonna give me my silhouette so that I don't have this kind of weird coarse blotchy head right up at the hook eye and I'm gonna draw that back you can see I'm gonna take it and draw it to one side of my hook take it and draw it to the other side that's how I kind of work around my hook point here so I have a nice coated head that's sealed right up in the front. It's pushed down into the strong fuzzy fiber and you get it off simply by wiping that back. Now that's kind of our first coat and it's not super crazy, right? And what I'm going to do here is come in with a, a bodkin and I'm going to make a little patch to put my eyes on. So I'm going to come and get a nice chunky amount of silicone about the size of my, my eye. Let that hang out. What's really nice is you can match where each patch is and get your eyes symmetrical just by looking at where you put your previous patch. So now I'm going to come in with my small set of eyes. These are 3 16 of an inch diameter. The first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to crease the package. That way those eyes cup into the, literally cup into the head when you go to put them on. Be careful getting them off just so you don't get more than what you want and drop them on the ground and whatnot. So I have this big kind of thick goopy pile of silicone right here. I'm going to peel this eye off my thumb. Make sure that my crease is kind of level here parallel with my hook shank and then I'm just gonna push that off and I can take my bodkins point and use my thumb and work that eye into the head and try not to push it dead center because if you push it dead center you'll ruin your cup but just tap it top and bottom and really let it kind of cup into that silicone And anytime I'm getting silicone on my bod my bodkin or my fingers, I should have mentioned this, <clears throat> but I have just painter's rags. You can use paper towel, but you just want to clean off stuff as you're going through this. So now I got eyes on my fly that are more or less symmetrical right on top of one each other, either dead center or just above my hook shank. And now I'm gonna come in and put my second coat of silicone, which is what's gonna finish the fly. And the way I like to do it is I'll take a big chunk put it down right in front of my eye 
Take a big chunk, put it right on my belly. Take a big chunk right in front of this eye. And then take a chunk right on top of the fly. And you can take your bodkin here and just make sure that that's more or less even. You just want it, you know, the same all the way around, density wise. And I can take my silicone and put that away. That's going to be enough, hopefully, to finish my head as long as everything's even. <clears throat> now this is where things get a little weird. But spit into a mug. <laughs> Make sure you got a nice amount in there. And don't like drink a bunch of coffee or milk or something like right before you do that. So you have other stuff. You just want pure saliva. Pure. That's where it's at. Take your finger and get it nice and wet. And that's your wetting agent. And it's not going to be perfect. Again, that Kodak Photo Flow is the bomb for doing this. But I have a nice moist wet finger that I can take and smash into that silicone. You can see it's not sticking to my finger at all. And I can take it and start pushing it back. And I'm just I'm pushing into the silicone and letting it just kind of distribute itself around my head here. And leave it a little thick over your eyes to help protect your eyes. You want it nice and thick over that eye. And then what I like to do, and you can see it's kind of happening anyway, but I'm starting to lose my, my slipperiness. And that's fine by me. What I'm going to do real quick, I want to get that wet one more time just so I have a smooth, smooth edge right before my collar. So I got my finger wet again. I'm just going to smooth out right on top of my head, right underneath my head. And then you can wipe your saliva off, and I'll use my tacky finger to draw that back into my collar so that it's very fanned out and it's very thin. And I don't have like a, a chunky wall of silicone that just stops abruptly, but instead it just kind of marries back into my collar. So right now my finger is completely dry, and the silicone is very tacky. And that's how I'm able to pull that and draw that back into my collar. And that is a silicone chosen one. The silicone's actually really easy to work with. Uh, it takes a little bit of practice, um, but you can see as far as getting a clear coat, extremely durable fly that's going to trap air, sealed in head, small air pocket for balance, took all the friction out uh, for three dollars or four dollars or whatever it costs, like it makes a wicked cool head that's easy to apply and you don't need the Kodak photo flow in all fairness it works probably about twice as good and it'll last a lifetime if you buy a bottle of it um, but you can just use your saliva and spit into a mug and get a fishable fly so a few things that are kind of just nuanced uh, this will take about 30 minutes before it's not tacky anymore it'll take about three hours before you can technically get it wet but it takes 24 hours to cure and so you want to, you know, if you're going to go fishing, you want to do all these, you know, a day before you go fishing. Not the day of or the morning of or the evening before, but a full 24 hours so that this is 100% cured. Um, it is milky right now. As it cures, it'll start to get uh, clearer and clearer and more transparent. I forgot to do this. Obviously, you want to clean out your hook eye so you don't have any silicone in your hook eye. Aside from that, um, if you have, you know, if you're fishing this for, for pike or something or musky and they, they get their teeth into this head or tear it up or you have, I don't know, if you catch 200 fish on this thing and your head starts to get beat up, you can just reapply the silicone. You can put another clear coat over top of that. Uh, if one of your eyes, like if I push the silicone too hard over one of the eyes and so it's a really thin layer and 20 fish later, you know, the eye falls off or peels off or the pupil's dead. I can just put a goop of silicone on there once it's dry, put a new eye on, put a new top coat on, and reseal the head. These these flies, if you tie them correctly, the durability is unmatched. Like these things last forever. The lifetime until you've sharpened that hook a dozen times, this thing will keep fishing. It's really cool. And it's repairable. It's fixable. So again, uh, I got a material kit on my website so that you guys can tie along and check all this out. i got links to the silicone, Bob Popovic's resources, the photo flow in the description. 
Um, this color combo is the bee's knees if you have any sort of dirty, tannic, red rocky bottomed rivers. This thing is unbelievable. Um, aside from that, if you want to see this fly fishing, I have both a silicone version and a non-silicone version. Videos in the description below. Uh, so you can check this guy out and see this guy stick a boatload of smallmouth. And what else, man? Yeah, but coming up, I'll show you guys how to do this in a jerk head format. So you have your silhouette counterpart. That's a little bit more technical with that head shape. Uh, but I'll show you guys how to do just the head. I'll th I think we'll do it on the dropper jig, which is a really fishy combo. That, that hind tight head on the dropper jig is ridiculously cool. Um, and then I think we'll finish off by showing you guys how to construct a pop lip using this exact material set with that silicone head making a silicone lipped fly that swims as a crankbait. And I'll show you guys how that one swims for sure because it's ridiculous. So, thanks for watching. Check all that out. And uh, happy time. See ya.